This is Twit. Uh, I, th- I do want to mention Apollo 11 because, of course, this is the week, uh, 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. And a lot of times we talk about the space program, and inevitably, and I don't know if they, people say this lately, but as, as, as long as I've been around, they've said, oh, yeah, the space program, what do we get? We got Tang, we got uh, Velcro, we got pens that could write upside down. And I never had a... a I'm biting my tongue on this one. It's why? Just- well, because Velcro existed before the space program, because the pen thing was developed privately for NASA rather than... <laughs> and by the right, but, Russian cosmonauts used pencils. Oh, it works in they, space! That's also, that's also an urban myth, because... The, they didn't use pencils? No, the graphite from the pencil would actually have shorted out electronics. Oh. So they started using pencils, and they found... It didn't work problems. so good. Bad idea, pencil. So, so what did they do? Well, laser eye surgery, for example. That yeah. was developed from software for getting ships to dock or berth with the... with with uh, other with other ships, a uh, whole host of new materials and ceramics, um, the kind of alloys needed to deal with these kind of things are now in 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 produce everywhere, and of course, computers. You know, really important. Really the first important. use of semiconductors, microelectronics. Yep. The f- really, it was the first embedded processor ever in the Apollo guidance computer that landed. The men on the moon. You see, Arthur C. Clarke always said it, it was it was one of the great uh, disappointments was the invention invention of microelectronics because he'd envisaged if you were going to put satellites around space, you'd have to have people there constantly replacing the, valve, <laughs> the valves on them. We call them tubes here. In well, the yes, yes, but um, <laughs> so it made, but I mean, no, we got a lot out of this. Oh uh, yeah, the fact They're, that, that we've dropped the ball ever since is, is great. Piece uh, Wall Street Journal uh, did a really great job, and I want to give credit. Uh, to the Wall Street Journal's, um, let me close the ad here so I can see uh, his name. The Wall Street Journal science reporter Robert Lee Hotz, who uh, did this video and narrated. I, I'm guessing with his son Alexander Hotz. Of, Houston, you're looking good for separation. You're a go for separation. Columbia, over. On a, July 20th, a guy named Don Isles, just moments after the Apollo 11, who had never programmed a computer before, to the moon. but was hired by MIT to help write the code that controlled Apollo's lunar module's descent to the moon. Uh, he was just a young guy, straight out of college, and uh, I guess at that time, where did you go to find computer programmers? Nowhere. Mm-hmm. So he was a smart guy. He, was, uh, he applied to the instrumentation laboratory at MIT, 23-year-old math major, and they said, well, math, okay, come on in. <laughs> and he ended up with a, with a team writing the software, uh, for the first, you know, IC-based interactive computer in space. If you look at the actual hardware, it's, it's just a masterpiece of right. Move this, I mean, it makes the Altair in 1976 look, you know, so far advanced, but... Uh... And they, just, they did look at the source code and they found some, some fun whimsy in it. Uh, some of the routine names, for instance, the ignition sequence was named Burn Baby Burn. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when the computer wanted to reposition the landing radar antenna, the code said, I, I presume this is a comment, astronaut, please crank the silly thing around. And then it performed a calculation to determine if the astronaut had moved it correctly, called See If He's Lying. When the antenna was aimed and the landing could proceed, the code said, Off to see the wizard. Okay. Yeah. Easter eggs were still always been a thing then. I also want to give credit uh, to a woman named Margaret Hamilton. Yes. Uh, she's still alive. She's in her 80s. She got awarded the Presidential Medal of Honor by Obama. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you'll pro- you've probably seen the picture of her with the uh, with the source code printed out on, Famous a, picture. on, a, on a reams of paper as tall as she was. She, uh, she's, uh, now you may, I don't know if you remember, but you'll if you listen to the landing, you'll hear... At one point, uh, as the lunar module is trying to come down, Neil Armstrong say, "We have a 1202 error." There's the picture of her with the uh, the reams, the huge yeah. printout of all the code. Oh my goodness! What's a 1202 error? Armstrong asks, <laughs> and uh, nobody knew what the 1202 error is. She knew. She was uh, sitting along with other uh, programmers and engineers. Because she wrote the alarm codes, including the 1202 code. She says they were, this is also in the Wall Street Journal, they were never supposed to happen alarms. 
I was in a state of shock. I mean, they're literally minutes from landing on the moon. Mm. They are in the lunar module. How could this be happening just before the landing? I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is not real. But to their credit, they had written the 1202 in. It was a signal that the computer had been overloaded. But, and this is, a, this is such a great story, it had been designed, if, it, if its RAM was full, to start dumping unimportant tasks in order to keep flying safely. And that's what 1202 was. And 1202 kept happening. And Armstrong said, what is going on? <laughs> And eventually, and you can hear this on the recordings, uh, the flight director, Gene Krantz, says to him, it's okay, you're go. Because they said, oh no, this is, this, you're not supposed to see this error. There was, there was uh, something, a switch had been flipped wrong at some point, and, and data was being dumped into the computer, but the computer was handling it properly. That 1202 error reset the computer. Mm -hmm. They continued to land. They landed safely. Uh, and I think a lot of credit goes to Margaret Hamilton and the team and, and many, many, many people yeah. at MIT and NASA who, uh, who had written this uh, code. So I, there is absolutely a story to be told around this Apollo 11 landing. And if you use a, com a computer today with microprocessors, and you have the whole of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. can thank Margaret Hamilton and, uh, and what and an amazing team. Um, including uh, the young Don Isles. Margaret Hamilton gave a, a lovely interview where she said she wouldn't have been able to do this if, she, if her husband hadn't been quite so enlightened about you know women's abilities and that sort of thing, which is, I presume is one of the reasons she married him. But um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was women used to be the bulk of coders in some areas, and it well, was only the, in the original. That's what a computer meant. Hmm. In the early days, a computer wasn't a machine. It was a human, a, a woman in most cases. Yeah, so every time you get the James Danmores of this world, it's like, well, women aren't, aren't suited towards coding. It's just like they've been doing it for the last uh, 70 years. <laughs> <sighs> um, 12, the 1202 was one of 29 alarms that could be displayed during the landing. Uh, give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm, Armstrong radioed. They were 30,000 feet and above the moon and descending. 27 seconds ticked off with no answer. As everybody scrambled to figure out what the hell. <laughs> Finally, Kranz <laughs> said, we're go on that alarm. And his team said, we're go. And he said, go. And they landed 17 seconds away from aborting what was, I think, in many ways, the most uh, amazing thing humans have ever done. And thanks to Margaret Hamilton. Here's another. Here's a picture of, of some Can of the other teams. Can you imagine you get all the way there and you abort? And the, you never would have lived that down in, in the astronaut bars afterwards. It's yeah, just like, we had to abort. No, uh, we're landing. We're there, man. Um, by the way, the final line of code. Uh, as billows of lunar dust settled around the lander 50 years ago, its onboard computer ticked through the instructions of its P-68 lunar landing confirmation routine embedded in the final lines, writes Hotz where no outsider was ever likely to see it, the software said, astronaut, now look where you ended up. <laughs> <laughs> On the moon. So that that is a great, uh, I, I really still get chills just uh, thinking about it. 